Hey, welcome to Running a Fever, episode 81. We're at a new place called the Mud Creek Trail, and I'm going to talk about physical torture today. Wow, that sounds really painful. So I ventured a little farther south today. This is an area that actually winds through the city of Fayetteville, Arkansas. And I've been itching to go to a new place ever since I completed my first full circuit of the Lake Fayetteville Trail. Now this trail is not in um, a loop. Uh, it goes down from east to west and then south across the entire area. The website says that people use it for transportation around the area. It's got a nice wide paved road. And by the way, it's my first time here, so I'm just going to kind of be trying to go by hopefully some signs as to how far I should go. Obviously, I can't go in a loop because it's not a loop and I need to be back to my car so I don't wind up walking forever. Uh, Mud Creek Trail, two mile point. So I'm at the two mile marker and it looks to be some townhouses or something that this runs behind. It's okay, I suppose. I don't think I would want to there's no fence or anything. I don't think I would want people just walking by my house all the time, but to each his own. And since it's new to you also, I've decided to make a video recording of this as well, which uh, will be available. So go to YouTube and uh, check out the video if you're not already watching this on YouTube. Now, I say you're not familiar with this. I really don't know. You might be familiar with it. I'm guessing my Swedish listeners and Japanese listeners, you never know, might have taken a trip here at some point. Maybe that's why you're listening. I don't know. Probably not. But you can check out the YouTube video, and it'll give you an idea of what the terrain is like here. Unlike the Lake Fayetteville Trail, this one is also lighted. And by the way, this is called the Mud Creek Trail, which is uh, supposed to be like two and a half miles or something. Tried to focus in on the map when I first got here. You can also put that on the website, and it will probably also provide a link to the mud, well actually the Skull Creek Trail website. Mud Creek Trail is a part of the Skull Creek Trail. It's one of those weird things. Mud Creek is a tributary of the Illinois River, which I'd never even heard of before today. So it's a whole Skull Creek Trail system. It's lighted and apparently very well maintained. We have some woods off to the left. And like I said, there's buildings off to the right. I'm now looking at what kind of looks like a post office. That's what I would guess. A post office maybe from the back. Don't really know. And on the left we've got some foliage and I can't really tell what's on the other side of it maybe the creek that's probably a good bet but the uh, all the foliage is in full foliation so it's kind of hard to see unlike oh, I think it was oh, no, the first it was the first video episode that uh, I was able to capture. Oh, and it is a creek. Okay, I can see it now. The 
first video episode I was able to capture some of that before the leaves came in I thought that was a dude but it's a Razorback Razorbacks are very popular in this city you can probably guess why if you know anything about the area it's very hard to go somewhere without seeing one. Doctor's office, a gym, and even a nature trail, believe it or not. I don't know if I call this a nature trail, walking trail, bike trail. So I'm guessing we won't be far off of the actual Mud Creek Trail today. We'll probably go the length of it and then uh, go back to the car. Now I know it's in the 90s today. Not sure exactly what temperature it is, but it's in the 90s. Or it could be triple digits. Talking about that in a later episode. It's pretty warm today. Fortunately, as I was hoping, there's plenty of shade here. I am having to walk on the wrong side of the road. So I have to just be careful for someone coming. Except for right here when there's no shade on either side. But it's interesting that there's lighting. So I could uh, definitely come down here uh, different times of day without with better lighting, I'd probably still wear my reflective gear if it was dark. Not a lot of darkness right now. Uh, summer solstice was nine days ago. Oh, wow, such a difference in the shade. It's amazing. So what do I mean by physical torture? Why did I say that? I'm not talking about working out, really. It's kind of a joke I have with some people that I'm seeing on a twice weekly basis now and it's called physical therapy or PT for short it can also stand for physical torture and it's kind of fun to tell the uh, people there that that's what I'm coming in for why am I coming in for physical therapy well uh, I have a condition known as DISH. Diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyper osteopathy. Wow, look at this. I had no idea that you could actually connect to the Lake Tra Fayetteville Trail from here, but I just saw a sign that says Lake Fayetteville Trail, one mile this way. So there's a one mile connection between Mud Creek Trail at the 1.5 mile point, and I don't really know where it meets up with the Lake Fayetteville Trail, but that'd be interesting to take that little connector. And I'm walking over what I assume is something related to the Mud Creek, but it's, uh, can't really tell. I've been walking alongside it all this time now. I'm walking over it and it's already on my left again, I think. But, uh, diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperosteosis. So basically it means my backbone's crooked. And uh, I've explained about this before. We finally did get it diagnosed and physical therapy was indicated and several other things that are proceeding along. Last week, I had uh, a session in which, so uh, I, you know, we did the x-rays and then uh, came back and saw the doctor and, and then we, he, he asked for some special x-rays that kind of shine up through your chest or neck to the spine. He looked at those and that's where he diagnosed the dish that I have. But he still needed to look further to see, to get more information. So he ordered an MRI. I think that stands for magnetic 
resonance imaging or something like that. Um, it's uh, sort of, I believe, in the same. And they now have an imaging department uh, in hospitals. Uh, not necessarily the same as a radiology department. Anyway, uh, let me talk more about that. I've got a, I actually got the uh, CD with all these images on it. I haven't looked at it yet, but I might be looking at that and posting it later. So this showed in more detail the problems that I had and, and allowed us to think about the options that we have. And then there's a, there's a definite pinching of the spinal cord there. So the nice people, uh, so you've got Kirk, the physical therapist, and then I've been with uh, several, I've been working out with several of the physical therapy assistants. Rachel's a student, still trying to get certified. She's working there. And then also have Sam. It's uh, Samantha, I believe, it's female, and Leanna. Um, all of whom are really just uh, slave driving torturers, but it's fun. No, seriously, they know what they're doing and uh, been kind enough to answer some of my questions. And so at the beginning, I had an assessment and uh, that measured, they've got uh, these very precise uh, machines that are all hooked up to a wireless network that keeps giving them trouble. But the machines allow more precise measurements of my range of motion and my strength for certain areas. A good shot of the creek as it goes under the bridge. In order to wind through the city, this trail has to cross some streets, some actual streets. And there's probably some underpasses and tunnels and who knows what that I'll find out in the future as I explore it more. And, uh, I've lived in this area for about 12 years. I have no idea where I am. I really don't. But that's fun. That's the fun part of it. It's the adventure. We're on an adventure. Always like a new adventure on the Running a Fever show. Glad you're along with me on the adventure. Hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. So the most difficult of these exercises, so the first, the first uh, visit was an assessment of my strength and range of motion, and they put all those in a computer, and they take percentage of, the, of those, and they develop a plan over the next 14 visits, which is altogether about six, seven weeks. And, uh, and then the, the future visits are all about that. Uh, Kirk also gave me some exercises to do at home, which I've been doing fairly regularly. Generally these days, I'm just doing them all at once at the end of the day. But they do also encourage me to do additional sets. Um, but as long as I'm doing the, um, the required ones, it should allow me to progress on my program. And after that visit, I scheduled all the bunch of other ones. And now I pretty much see uh, the assistants and the one student exclusively. And they take me through the exercises and I go in and uh, put me on a bike for 10 minutes to warm up. And then I go through all the machines that are David machines made by a company, or it's the brand is David, maybe. They all have David on them. They all have screens and the screens help me it's like a game right it tells you what range of motion to stay in and how fast to do the exercise this is something i imagine you could have in a gym but they're probably far more expensive far more expensive than the regular ones where you just have to figure it out yourself but very effective, keeps me focused and doing those exercises properly. I know already from bodybuilding that form is extremely important. So these machines are working my hips and 
lower back, abs, and uh, shoulders and neck muscles. The most difficult one is the neck. It's a machine that puts a clamp on your head like a vise. And then you have to turn it. Then you have to turn your head against the resistance of whatever weight you're on that day. And that's the workout. Yeah, that's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. Speaking of toughness, I really the first two or three visits were, it's not like a workout, you know, I mean, because they're very gradual. They know exactly what to do. Unlike me out on my own, just in the wild, wild west of running a fever land. Sometimes I'm so feverish, I don't know what I'm doing. And ignorant. They really know what they're doing. They're trained, and that helps a lot. So this is all part of a medical report, but it kind of ties into fitness because the last workout that I had really felt like a workout. I mean, after every uh, exercise, every set, I have to rate how hard it was, one through five. And they're all kind of one or two, maybe a three, until the last time when they're probably mostly threes. Never had a four, which I think would be more than normal difficulty. I mean, it's a five point scale, so it's gonna be hard to get a four. A five would be, you know, I, I almost can't handle it, so. That's my opinion. It's all objective, subjective. So I do feel like I'm getting a good workout, which is good because honestly, I haven't worked out in a couple of weeks other than that. And I can't remember the reason I didn't get out last Saturday. Um, I've been having some discomfort in my knees, uh, especially the one that had the injury and I don't know you never know it could be just because I'm not working out that could be part of it uh, but not painful enough it's really the worst kind you know not painful enough to want to go to the doctor but enough to make me worry about it well I've been taking through a couple of curves here another curve to go a lot of traffic, so it's noisy, too noisy to talk. A little under, a little over a mile traveled so far, according to the markers. And I really need to just get out and do it. You know, the, the weight training, I need to just get up in the morning and go do it. Really been thrown off by my schedule at work, but I really can't let that bother me, I don't think. I think, uh, I, think I can still do a workout in the morning. Anyway, I've done enough talking about that, I need to just do it. And I'm out here today. Feels good to be out here. Feels good. Thought about just going out during the week, having not gotten up early in the morning, and not really wanting to face the crowds of a, you know, 5 p.m. on a weekday in the gym. Howdy. Find out what a Theropod is. I guess it's uh, probably one of those um, sensory deprivation experiences. <clears throat> Not going very fast today, you know, partially because of the knee. It's unfamiliar territory, but that's no real excuse to slow my pace because it's not very dangerous terrain. It's really, so far, mostly the same level. Half mile marker. We're straying away from the creek a little bit now. So back to the medical report. The bottom line is I did have my MRI reviewed and he said that A, I am a candidate for surgery uh, to correct the situation. It's major surgery. We're talking about removing vertebrae and, you know, correcting the situation, removing whatever uh, 
whatever has, you know, deformed the bone in that way and then putting them back together. And I expect there's a fairly long recovery period with that. Don't know how long. I'm hoping that surgery is not needed. So the doctor did say that if, you know, the, if the, the physical therapy results in an improvement in my pain, the symptom that brought about my entry there, or my coming into his office, then if it improves at all, he said, then we're home free. We can eliminate it purely through physical therapy. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but uh, cervical traction, which means stretching my neck. <laughs> so last week, uh, part of my appointment on Monday, usually I finish with the high tech machines and they let me do a little gym work. Um, with some more traditional cable pulls and uh, kind of like a lat pull down cable and it's all cables really well except for the uh, leg press machine which is kind of interesting has a disc on it that's not really stable and it's supposed to you know allow you to move around can correcting that and the work those stabilization muscles. The same argument used to promote free weights over machines is that by activating those muscles that correct your position, you can strengthen the muscles and the overall, the overall uh, strengthening of the muscle group. So I got an arrow that says the Skull Creek Trail, and we knew that this was going to be about two and a half miles, I think. But I started at the two mile point, and I'm going backwards. So I reckon I'll probably have to go into the Skull Creek Trail. Now I'm making a U-turn. I went under the bridge, and it looks like I'm going to go over it. <clears throat> So obviously I want to avoid major surgery. And so that's an incentive to really work hard on my assigned physical therapy, both in the gym and at home. And part of this whole medical thing is not just going to the doctor, finding out what's wrong, telling them all your pains and hoping to get a pill or something, but actually doing what is suggested by someone who you're paying to know more than you about this stuff and give you good advice. Seems to make sense, but it's not easy to do, to take our, our part of the responsibility. And as I'm finding out and I'm sharing with you, it's not all about getting a new, you know, device or drug or something like that to help you out. A lot of times it's about changing the way you do things. And that's what I'm having to do. Now my body is lopsided. I don't have scoliosis, but my body is lopsided. If you look at me, you can kind of tell that one shoulder is lower than the other. Howdy. When I asked him the cause of my illness, the neurosurgeon told me that it was probably, okay, here's the zero mile, and this is great. I don't think I've seen this before. It's very informative. Zero miles, so I've walked two miles, and it's the 3.75, which means I have to go to the 2.7, the 3.25. Live math, morning. Oh, thank you, Amy. Amy is my new announcer working here at uh, Running a Fever World Headquarters, and she's uh, kind enough to provide warnings for you when I'm going and trying to work with numbers and exercise and talk all at the same time, something which I am 
grossly inadequate at any sort of performance or accomplishment thereof. So thanks, Amy. I hope you're enjoying her introduction to the show at the beginning as well of some episodes. If I get the episode number wrong, I just have her do it later. Uh, he said, probably, of course, you don't know. We're just using his wisdom and experience, but the doctor said, probably, it might have something to do with genetics. And I think I can probably say that's probably true, but uh, I don't really know. Uh, talk to my parents about it. i going to see them this week. Might have been complicated by my environment. And I noticed, now that I'm being more aware of how I you know, live my life and what my posture is and all that, that I spend a lot of my day, so I'm right-handed, and nights, I guess, because at home is where I do it. I told you a while back that I'd switched to mousing with my left hand at work. Sometimes I do that now, sometimes I don't. I'm not at my desk all the time, so it gets weird. But I've got a really interesting intersection here. There's another connector to Lake Fayetteville and Gordon Long Park and Lake Fayetteville Vance Skyhawk Trailhead Mud Trail is back where I came from and I'm heading to downtown Fayetteville. Very confusing. 3.25. Okay. Notice that I lean over on the left side because I'm used to having to have my right arm free. I kind of slouch over to the left. And what does that do to my body? Well, it takes my left shoulder up and my right shoulder down. Enough to twist things and distort the muscles that are holding up my spine. Yeah, you never think these things are gonna really have an effect. Over the long term, they do. Your muscle, you know, it's, it's elastic. It stretches and tightens, and it comes to a state of rest. And that affects your bones, because it's just like a rubber band on a bow, or, you know, bowstring on a bow. It bends it out of shape. And doesn't exactly pop back into shape. Even if you could cut that muscle and take it off, so it's all about now trying to correct all that and uh, get back into shape. I have to be mindful of that in my work environment, at home, trying to keep my posture, shoulders back, head straight up. Uh, there's a reason that you've always heard that you should, that's the good posture to have. It's the way your back was designed to be. So I'm working hard trying to take the advice of medical professionals who know better than I do. And I'm just gonna move forward and see, see how it goes. And um, my pain is not extreme, even when, um, you know, like today, I've already taken eight Advil today. Didn't take any right before I came out, but I'm not feeling any pain in my arm right now, my shoulder. So, I mean, I'm hoping that, that is, the traction and the exercise is all going to uh, give me enough progress to move forward and I can just continue as long as it takes. And uh, so the torture continues probably for another uh, eight or nine visits, another month or so. Uh, a month and a half and we'll see what happens and you'll hear about it here on running a fever where I got the fever I want to live as long as I can and I'm doing what I can to live as long as I can because I love my life I want it to last as long as possible well, thank you for listening and I'll catch you on the flip-flop keep the fever this is the Padua podcast network Padawa Media.
www.ericsmartmedia.com.